Yeah, thank you. Um, so pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Uh, members of the public who wish to access, access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, which are in the, uh, uh, in, on the agenda. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the specific public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, we have a one hour restriction on our meeting today, and this is the agenda. And my role is to initiate the meeting and then ask for the selection of a chair. And then that chair will then ask for the selection of a vice chair. So I think Kathy Shane was the chair last year. So do we have, and the way we'll do it is we'll ask for nominations and then we will ask the person if they wanna serve and then we'll continue with the nomination process until there are no other nominations. And then we will go around the room and ask people to vote on who they would like to serve as chair. Um, so looking for nominations, I see Mandy Johanneke with her hand up. Yeah, I'm gonna nominate Kathy Shane for chair. Kathy, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Okay. Are there other nominations for chair? No eager, anybody out there? Okay, see none. Uh, we will go around the room and see who would like, to, um, in terms of the vote. Uh, Mandy Johanneke. Um, aye to Kathy. Okay. Uh, Anna? Yes, Kathy Shane. Uh, Alex? Yes. Uh, Farah? Yes. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. Uh, Irv? Yes. And Kathy? Yes, thank you. Now the meeting is yours, Kathy. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I actually love being chair of this, so I'm I'm glad to do it again. Um, and because of Sean, it's gotten easier because we're so well organized. So I am now open to nominations for vice chair. Mandy, I'm going to nominate Alex Lefebvre. Alex, are you willing to serve? I am again. <laughs> Any other nominations? Seeing none, I will do just what Paul did, call out names and uh, indicate uh, whether you're in favor or not. Um, uh, Anna. Yes. Mandy. Yes. Alex. Yes. Farah. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Irv. Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's an it's unanimous. So we have a chair and a vice chair. And uh, delighted that you're doing it again, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I think at this point, um, we're turning it over to Sean, um, who will talk about is that correct, Sean? You're ready to do this, yes? Yes, he's on mute. But yeah. He's, um, he's... Do we want to do quick introductions, or does everybody know each other? Uh, maybe we we do. Um, I'm I'm Kathy Shane, and I'm a town councilor. There are three councilors, and I'll have everyone just go around the room and say who they are. Uh, um, why don't you do? Uh, I'll call out names. Anna. All right. Uh, around the room, I think it's, it looks different for everybody. I, I know. We don't, we don't have a <laughs> It's room. all good. Sorry. No worries. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna Devlin Gothier. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the town councilor representing District 5 and very excited to be here. I'll throw it over to Alex. Uh, Alex Lefebvre, um, uh, Jones Library trustee. And I'm going to throw it over to Farah. Hi, I'm Farah Amin, and I'm the newest member on the Board of Trustees at the Jones. And you oh, sorry, to... Jen. Hi, Jennifer Shaw. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a member of the school committee. And I'll throw it to Irv. My name is Irv, and I am on the Amherst School Committee. And we have... I think that leaves me. Yes. I'm Mandy Jo Haneke, and I am one of the counselors on this committee. And so we we have, um, so Sean, if we turn it to you, the, we have new members um, who haven't served on the Joint Capital Planning Committee. So I think just uh, what we are, how we work, 
would be useful. And it's extremely useful that you've given us timing because we're trying to end at in an hour because we have a second meeting that starts then. Um, that, that was the best innovation last year was the um, setting hard timeline, time allocations for each agenda item. Um, so yeah, so the next one is that leads to our next agenda item, which is review the role of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Um, so it has changed a little bit in the last few years. Uh, pre um, the town, the charter change, Joint Capital Planning Committee did more of the creation of the capital plan. Um, as part of the charter change, it really, uh, the JCPC really changed it to more of a review and um, advisory model. So the way it works now is a town manager develops the capital plan and JCPC will review that plan and provide um, guidance and advice to the town manager for his final, uh, as he develops a final plan to present to the council. Um, and that worked really well last year as there were different issues that came up. And I think there were changes that uh, based on recommendations and feedback from JCPC that led to the town manager changing his capital plan. And I would just say the other thing that was the innovation last year that earlier JCPCs had asked for is the plan that's brought to us is more nearly balanced that we're looking at. Um, there were, it may be a little over and we look over several years in the past. When I first, well, I wasn't on the first time on council Mandy was, but um, the potential list of what was on the list, which were all high priority was about double the amount of money we had to spend. So now we're, we're coming in closer to what I would call a balanced plan and, but still with nuances. We then write a report and we give the report to the town manager and we also post it to give it to the council with a brief summary. It then becomes the town manager takes our recommendations and turns it into a capital plan that goes out for a public hearing and review. So that's where that middle step of recommendations. And we have changed it in terms of we've added, subtracted, modified some of what was in the first round of proposals. Yeah, so this, um, so what I have on the screen now is last year's capital plan, FY22, which I was thinking we'd spend some time just to go through um, the sections and just see if there's questions on those sections and because it kind of follows the process that um, we're gonna follow. So this first piece just lays out um, what it is that we're doing. Um, the first piece here is the capital inventory. So we have, uh, when you get the capital plan or the draft capital plan, um, hopefully next week, you'll have the inventory attached to the back of it. Um, so that you'll have that as you consider the need for different capital projects. Um, the second section here talks about the capital improvement program and what I was talking about, uh, the role of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Um, it also lays out some things that shall be in the capital improvement program. And I think we made progress on just about all these last year um, at making sure these were part of that package that goes to you early in the process. Um, so you'll get a, a complete listing of the projects um, you'll get five years worth, uh, well, there'll be a focus on the upcoming year, but you'll get five years worth of projects, what's on the radar. Um, you'll get the cost estimates, how we're proposing to finance them, uh, the time schedules for the way it'll work is we'll give you the capital plan, but then every project that we're proposing for FY23, there will be a detailed, um, project description form that you'll also have access to, which was what the, the department had submitted when they requested the project. Um, and we'll try to organize, organize those by when those departments are coming to meet with you. So for example, if um, in a couple of weeks you're meeting with the schools, we'll have all the school project uh, request forms in that packet. Uh, so you can go to that meeting date and go to that packet and you'll see all the, the projects that are gonna be discussed that night. Hey, Sean, quickly, can you let Sonia into the meeting? I try to, she was struggling to get in. I think it has something to do with the Zoom account. I will try one more time though. Oh, okay. So, and then I see, Anna, you have a question. Um, so I do maybe... have a question. Yeah, uh, I don't know who to direct. I'll just throw it out into the universe. Um, the capital inventory, it says that town council determines the requirements for that inventory. Where is that in the timeline? When does council, when are, when's that supposed to happen? So my memory, and, and Kathy or Paul or Mandy might remember this better. Um, last year, we went through more of a process with the council where I think it was, 
given to finance committee to talk about um, what those uh, items would be and they came up with a preliminary list and that's what we followed so our hope is that it doesn't change every year in terms of what's so that we can kind of have a, a mechanism for gathering that information so unless there's a proposed change or additional information we'll follow the same criteria um, or the same types of information that we gathered last year and i'm pretty sure i can find it, there was a document on it that went through we could do this that or the other and we came up something that's feasible for for them to be regularly updating rather than you know we might want to know other things but we want we don't want the staff to spend forever doing research so that that guided the criteria yeah definitely to to clarify i was just thinking about this from like the agenda setting perspective and making sure that we're not pushing it like we're not leaving it till that right no, april or something by accident so i just yeah so Mandy has her hand up too. Yeah, I just wanted to say I think the town council actually passed the passed some sort of motion that said here's the things that will go into it. So there's probably a motion somewhere. Yeah, there's, a, I, I think there's memo. both this way. I think there's the motion and a document that sort of said here's the motion, but here's here's the rationale. So we can make sure everyone Perfect. gets that as background. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Um, so this is just the rest of the process. So um we uh, this committee tries to wrap up its work by the end of March and make a, um, the recommendation to the town manager by the end of March. So that gives the town manager one month, uh, the month of April to make any adjustments, make any um, any final modifications based on the guidance from JCPC uh, to then be able to deliver the cap, the final capital, uh, their final proposal, of the capital improvement program to the council um, at the first meeting in May or the first uh, business day in May. And then there will be a public forum on, on the capital plan. Um, I think that's currently scheduled for sometime in early June. And, it, and then the capital plan will be adopted sometime uh, in June, uh, usually at the same time the operating budget is adopted. So let's keep, is it okay if I keep going, Kathy? Yeah, and I, I think, Sean, if you're willing, if, if hands go up, I'll keep my eye yeah. on the screen to make sure I capture anyone. So people do the little raise hand button. So we um, we modified the document last year to try to um, include everything that the charter calls for, but also um, make it understandable to uh, residents who may want to follow along and see where we are at the process. Um, so we did put in some just charts that kind of lay out different months of the year, what we're working on, things like that. So this won't change a lot every year, and we can certainly clarify if there's questions or if things are confusing. Um, that feedback would be helpful. We can we can make those modifications. Um, same thing, there's a little narrative, a little message. Um, if there's anything unique about this year's capital plan, if there's themes, we'll, we'll put that on the front end of the, the document and you can see a breakout of um, projects. And this can be a little, uh, this is, so again, this is all last year's, so this was the final plan from last year. This can be a little funky um, because we have the building projects in we one of our goals was to try to incorporate the planning for the building projects into the overall capital planning so when you see like this big slice for public works administration um that's because there's a chunk i believe of the building project in there which makes it look like it's a huge piece of our capital which it is a huge piece but it's spread out over a longer period of time jennifer so the blue wedge that's not labeled is public works oh it is labeled can, yeah sorry we should have should have changed the color on it yeah Public Works Administration. Yep. What's the percentage, Sean? I'm having uh, trouble 20, reading it. Twenty-one percent. Thank you. Yep. And again, that's because we put in. Um, we were hoping to start uh, funding the replacement of the DPW. And and just so I mean, Sean will cover this later. But there's a combination as we're reviewing things of things we buy outright that are called capital, but if we're taking out a large loan over time, it gets booked in the year that we're paying some amount of it back. So all of those enter in this. Um, and part of the capital plan has capital that we're paying from earlier years. So we will see, here's the total amount that flows in, and here's how much we have to allocate this year that's cash, but the cash could be taking on debt. So that comes to us linked to projects with a recommendation of that, whether this is cash or whether it's debt. Yep. I'm not gonna focus on the time, this timeline because we're gonna spend time at the end to focus on the 
uh, the, the timeline we're going to follow for FY23. So I'm going to skip that. All right, so this is um, this is probably the most important summary for you to understand. It's also the most complicated. I tried to draw on it earlier to make it uh, highlight things. I didn't realize it was going to save. I was going to try it out tonight, but you get the you get the messy version. Um, so you probably won't understand it completely tonight. But if I do it tonight and then I also do it next week, it a better chance that it'll it'll start to make sense. Um, so this is sort of an overall financial picture of the capital and, and what we can afford and what we can't afford, whether there's a gap or not. Um, and keep in mind, this is looking at what was done last year. So this top section where, um, where it says prior year levy limit, two and a half percent allowable increase, this is what drives how much funding we have for capital from the property tax levy. And what the town does each year is it, it establishes, um, a it agrees upon a percentage of the tax levy that it's gonna dedicate to capital. And so this bolded percentage right here, that those are what we're hoping to hit for targets or what we did hit for targets in the years that are approved. Our goal is to get to 10%. Um, and we took a dip when COVID hit. That was one of the areas where we had to scale back. We scaled back in capital. That's why you'll see it's at 5% for FY21. Uh, but we have sort of an aggressive plan to get back up to 10% because we were almost there before COVID hit. I think we were just about to go to 10% or maybe we hit it for one year. Um, and then we had to scale way back because of COVID. So we have an aggressive plan to get back to 10%. So you can see it goes from five to eight and a half up to 10. Um, and so you'll see what that looks like uh, when we bring you back the next, the, the FY23 version. Um, but all this is based on whatever this levy is. So if the levy estimate is 57 million, um, that's what that percentage is based on. Um, we, when we do a uh, look back when we base the percentage, uh, when we calculate that percentage, so like the eight and a half percent for FY22, that's based on the final levy from I believe FY20. So we do a little bit of a look back, so we have an actual number, um, but it's tied directly to whatever that levy is. Alex? Alex has a yeah. All right, too many buttons to push. Um, I don't know if it's helpful or if people want any history around those percentages to understand sort of why we have them, where we were, why they were put in place, just to have a sort of bigger, broader picture. Sure. Sonia, do you want to give that history? You've you've probably you've lived it the longest in terms of the fluctuations in, ter in terms of our capital. Do you want to give a little context to that? I can't see her though. Is she there? Yeah, she just unmuted okay. herself. Yeah, I, um, it's pretty simple history. I think uh, I think we were down to like 5% and even lower than 5% back in the last recession that we had. And um, I really didn't come into play for JCPC until we started to slowly, started to slowly climb back up. But um, basically it was the recession and the first place everybody cuts is capital to to avoid cutting operating budgets. So I don't really have a whole lot of history. Yeah, um, and I think, I think the other thing is there was sort of recognition that there was a lot of capital coming up in the future that we had to start right. getting the level um, up to a higher amount in order to maintain things that were starting to um, need repairs and also to prepare for some of these other larger projects that are coming right. up. We started to really aggressively increase when the four projects came up and we we're trying to figure out how to fund them, we started to slowly increase the percentage higher and higher in order to prepare to get there. And also to be able to fund more of our capital to get more things done before these big projects came into place. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I would just add, I mean, this, this has been well over a, a decade in terms of the planning and some real active planning on the part of the town to move the percentage of uh, the levy toward capital up by a half a point every year, which is what was being done successfully with the ultimate goal of getting to 10%. And we were on track and doing what needed to be done. And then COVID hit um, and things were shifted. And so that's why you're seeing the numbers go five to eight and a half to 10. So that's, it's, it's playing out what was the model that was put into place. I want to say like 15, 20 years ago, like it's been a while that I mean, I've been on JCPC for what, six or seven years. Um, and so it's been a very steady, thoughtful. Yeah, climb. we've been increasing about a half a percent every year. Each year. 
exactly. And the the financial guidelines that the council is adopting has reconfirmed or confirmed again those uh, targets because we and when we came on as counselors we inherited a financial policy that was doing this as Alex said going backwards and we immediately said we wanted to continue doing that so it wasn't just a let's do steady course there was a look at it uh, Jennifer and Anna's hands are both up Jennifer I think first thanks this might be a silly question but in what ways did COVID affect our tax levy such that we had to reduce to 5%? I mean, obviously COVID affected everything, but like what's like what's specifically- yeah, like some, are, some of the good examples. Um, so a lot of it was in our two places. Our state aid stayed flat the year um, that COVID hit. So you know, normally we get two, 3% increases that stayed flat. So that, um, that was an issue. And then a lot of, many of our local receipt categories were impacted negatively. Um, and our enterprise funds were impacted negatively. So when the uh, UMass and Amherst College sent their students home for half of the year, um, things like parking revenues dropped way off, water and sewer revenues dropped way off, um, hotel, motel, uh, uh, meals tax, um, really anything you can think that is driven by economic activity downtown, those things um, either dropped off or we were really concerned they were gonna drop off. And most of them did drop off. We were. Um, this has been a tough a challenge for budgeting because it was sort of trying to estimate how quickly they would recover, how far they would uh, fall off. And so we're starting to get back to having a little bit of a trend that we can estimate going forward. Um, but those are the major drivers that caused it. And then what Sonia said, Jennifer, because we wanted to protect the school's operating budgets, sure. we said, it, where do we need to make a cut to adjust? And we cut it out of capital. Okay. You know, so the capital took took the cut to maintain. We didn't lay off anybody, <laughs> you know. Right. I, yeah. Can I ask one more question? Is ten percent the goal, or is ten point five percent the goal? Because it says it looks like it. You know, we max out at ten point five. In, Great in question. Um, so ten percent was the goal um, when we did a process to determine how we could afford the four building projects. Um, we used a lot of different assumptions. We modeled it out going forward. Um, and if we can get to 10 and a half percent, it puts us in a better position to be able to fund those four projects um, in a more comfortable way. So we started, again, we tried to integrate the plan for the four building projects and our regular capital together so we could see how it all fits. Um, and so you'll see elements of the building projects in here. And that's one of those elements. Well, Anna? All right, so I'm not apologizing for needing to learn. I am apologizing if this is frustrating for other people. Um, my question is the dramatic shift, obviously you're expecting recovery and you're estimating recovery, right? But is there a potential that this is going to impact operating if we are increasing at such a drastic, no. making such a big jump? Right, no, that's- Is that that's, a worry? So when we did the 4 billion project, uh, analysis, that was one of the things we looked at is would there be an impact on operating? Um, and it looked like for, um, it looked like there was some potential in FY23, FY24 that um, if we wanted to stick to this plan, we might have to scale back on the operating increases a little bit. Um, I think things have recovered quickly enough that that's not going to be a concern. Like we were able to do two and a half percent this year. Um, and I think when I did that analysis, I wasn't sure we were going to be able to do that. So I think things have recovered quickly enough that we don't have to worry about that if we try to get to the 10%, uh, but it is, it is a give and a take. So the more we spend on capital, the less we have for operating and for other costs. John, can I just interject too sure. that um, part of the um, process of going toward for the four large projects is we were building reserves at the same time so that if we we were planning on using some reserves for some of the debt service through the out years. Yeah, after, after Herb's you. question, uh, let me get through this some um, slide just because you'll see some of that too, what Sonia just mentioned. So Herb. So are we still on the five-year plan or are you gonna go forward, John? Um, we're still on the plan. No, we're still, yeah, no, if you have any questions, whatever you All have. All right, so I'm, when I look at this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, uh, taking a deep dive in this thing for the first time, sure. when I look at it, I the, the first question that comes up to me is when I look at the bottom line for borrowing, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. as we go across for fiscal uh, 23. Is that an estimated projected borrowing? And is that bar is that the gross number for borrowing? And if that's a gross number for borrowing, what is the number that we would be actually uh, paying uh, if it's going to be a bonded issue? So that's a good question. Can I just keep going through this top part and I'll get to that. I'll highlight that when I go through. I think it makes sense as I go down to cover that. Um, is it okay if I just keep going on this top yeah, slide? Yes, well, go ahead because I, I think we're, if, I, if I'm concluding rightly in terms of my mind where you're going, that, that question will be answered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, so let me just, I'll get there pretty quickly. Um, so this top section that you're looking at right now, this is all about the resources for capital. All right, not, this doesn't focus on any of the outlays of capital. This is all about the resources. So this line cash capital, that's how much uh, the resources that are available for capital based on the tax levy. Um, this next line debt exclusion, this is because we have the four building projects integrated into this. And so the, um, the plan that we have currently would be to do a debt exclusion override for the schools. And so that would become a funding source for the school debt. So you'll see the revenue on the top piece here and you'll see an equal amount on the bottom um, for the school debt. Reserves, again, this is only in here because we integrated the school, the four building projects. So we had a plan to use um, a little over 4 million total to support the four building project plan. It would, we would use reserves in the years when new debt would kick in and then it would phase out um, over time. So this res these reserves that you see here, um, it's consistent with that plan that we presented for the four building projects. And it really will only use reserves if we have a building project, the debt start for a building project in that year. Uh, community preservation is an in and out to um, every year. There's uh, some debt for community preservation act projects. It comes in as a revenue source and then it goes out. So that's a, a wash. You don't have to worry about that very much. Um, Comcast funding we, in our agreement with Comcast, we get $75,000 a year that we can put towards the debt for the municipal fiber project. And so that's why you'll see it as a resource. And then down below in the debt section is the outlay for the municipal fiber. Other is if we have any um, grants, uh, if we use revolving funds or some other funding source, sometimes we're able to purchase things out of the ambulance fund, um, purchase ambulances out of the ambulance fund when we have enough there. Um, so if there's any other funding source, it's we don't have this a ton, but if there is any other funding source, it would be in this other mm -hmm. category. And then the last one here is state aid. Uh, we get something called chapter 90 every year, which can be used for road repairs. And so we show that here too. Um, and, but pretty much that's entirely that chapter 90 money. So the total of all those, um, those different funding sources is shown here. And then if we can't, in addition to those funding sources, we have the option to borrow. So what Irv was talking about is this borrowing line. So this would be an addition to these funding sources we could choose to borrow for a project. And it really depends on the project and um, whether we would choose to do that. The reason why it gets so high in these out years is because it has the building projects in it. So we don't tend to normally borrow a ton each year, um, but because we have the, um, the library, the DPW, the, um, uh, the fire station and the school project, I believe they're all in here. Um, that's why you see these borrowing numbers go up so high. Irv, did you have any, did you want to ask anything else before I keep going on that borrowing? Well, yeah, why don't you just continue it? I can, okay. I'll come in later. Okay. So again, those, those are the funding sources. So this next section are the outlays. So we start by subtracting any of our actual debt. Um, so anything that's been approved in the past, we either have a, we're either paying the debt currently or we have a debt schedule that we feel pretty good about. That comes off the top because we have to make those debt payments first. And this is debt for capital. Um, so that's first. Then we have a row here for projected debt. So if there are um, any projects that we're proposing that have debt, we show them here. And then we put a separate line in here for the four building projects because of, um, I think we wanted to see what the impact of the debt was from four building projects separately. So that's shown here under new projects. So those th three categories combine um, to four, or sorry, let me, let me just take one step back. Projected debt, that's all debt that includes the, um, the debt for the school 
uh, the building projects. New projects is what we call cash capital or if we pay for it all at once. So if we were to buy um, uh, repair uh, the stairs to town hall and we were gonna pay for it all at once, that type of project is in this new project section. So this is sort of pay as you go, um, this new project section. So you've got your actual debt, projected debt related to projects that we've, we've earmarked as a borrowing and then pay as you go types of projects. And those three types of um, ways to fund projects combine to be the total cash capital outlay. And then we have these three other sources here where if we were to fund, um, if we had a funding source up above, you'd see the outlay down below. So the debt exclusion override, that would be for the school. If we were to pay for something out of the ambulance fund, that would be in, or, or another grant type fund, that would be in this other category. And then the state aid outlay, um, that expenditure would be in the state aid section. And then the bottom line is what we're looking at to see if we're in balance. And so for FY22, we always, you know, we have to be in balance for the year we're proposing. But when we look at the out years, we've been trying to spend more time focusing on those out years to make sure we don't have a bubble um, or we don't just keep pushing projects off because that sometimes can cause issues too if you just keep delaying things. So we, we do look at these out year numbers as well. Um, the farther out you go, you might see a bigger um, amount available because it's um, the farther out you go, the less certainty there is about the need for certain projects. Um, so those usually will fill in as they get closer. And the last thing I'll say is, so anything we propose for borrowing, we build in the projected debt. So for example, if there was the library, um, if we projected the library up here as a borrowing, the library projected debt payments come in here. So it's all here um, for capital. Any questions? Yes. Um, so Sean, the actual debt, um, under projected, I'm under projected debt. Mm -hmm. Is that the debt payment on in fiscal 23? So fiscal 23, this was projected back then, but the actual debt payment would have been um, 1,242,000. Again, this includes CPA, the Comcast uh, funded piece that I was talking about, and then general fund debt. Um, and I believe it also includes Sonia, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it also includes the regional school assessment as well. Right. Um, we pay an assessment right. to the regional school for their related to their debt. Um, so that would have been the actual debt number for that year. And, and the projected debt under fiscal 23, the one Those, million. Yeah, that would be for projects that are not approved yet. Aha. All right. Um, so one small question here: uh, C CPA debt. Would you explain mm -hmm. that? I always thought that CPA was separate and they can do their own borrowing, et cetera. Yeah, um, Sonia may be better to explain that because it has to do with it being, it's part of the general fund. So we include it um, because we want this summary to tie to the general fund summary that you, you'll see as part of the budget process. And so we have to include CPA here because we have to include it there, but Sonia can probably do a better job explaining it. One thing, I think that there's a ton of questions that, and I would like to, just at some point, circle back with you, Sean, and ask those questions separately so I don't take sure. up this tonight. Yep. Do you want to explain CPA debt? Sure, and then we'll go to Farah. So when we do the CPA process, um, we uh, propose all the projects to the council. A part of that is for debt service in the CPA process. So um, the CPA committee recommends of course, paying our debt service, debt that we've already borrowed for. And that, that amount of money gets transferred from the CPA fund once it's voted from town council, it gets transferred over into the general fund into the debt service. So it's included in the debt service because it's part of our general fund debt. It has to come out of the general fund. So it just ends up being a transfer from the CPA fund over to here, but it has to show up here. To show Farah? the debt. Farah? Uh, just two small questions. What is the Comcast project? Like real, sh like really briefly. And when you, when you were talking about state aid and roads, is that just bigger picture roads or things like potholes and things like that? Uh, so the, the Comcast, so that's, so we started a project to connect, um, most of the buildings, the municipal buildings in town with fiber. Um, 
our own town owned fiber. I believe right now we're on Comcast fiber. And so we want to get off of that and get onto our own network that we can manage. Um, and there's, there's other benefits of having control over our own municipal fiber in town. Um, and that'll go to the schools and the library and, and really all the, all the key buildings. Um, and then the second question was about the chapter 90 in the state. So um, it can be used on, it, it's used on road repairs. I believe sometimes it can be used on other uh, road related improvements, right, Sonia, and equipment? Yeah, um, it can be used for uh, uh, large trucks for roads. It's chapter 90 money. And it just, it basically just gets lumped in with the other road money and whatever the DPW puts through for roads that year. It, it just gets added to that bucket. Yeah. So when you think about the amount of money that we put towards roads, it's going to be adding two lines together. It'll be this state aid amount. And then it'll also be another amount that we fund out of um, other capital resources. Um, but you'd add those two together to get a sense of how much we're putting towards roads. And and just I, I want to add that when we say roads, it's also sidewalks. So it's a road slash sidewalks, which when you see the total and you hear Guilford say how little we get for the amount of money that we pay, you know, it's uh, you get a sense of a pothole versus a mile of road versus a sidewalk. Um, but that will his those questions are really good to ask him on what can we get for our money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So two questions, what is our deck capacity for the town? Uh, and uh, A, uh, I'm asking A, deck capacity. And then next question, follow-up question is that, it, 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 I just wanna make sure I'm understanding this. When we put together the uh, municipal budget, the first thing that is going to be paid is our, our debt obligations, is that correct? When we put together this capital, yeah, we, we start with any actual debt we have to pay that comes off the top. So if our debt goes up, then that means there's less for new projects um, going forward. And in terms of our debt capacity, so I don't know if you have the latest number, it's over a hundred million. Um, yeah. I think but, it's about 130 at this point. Yeah, it's, it's around 130. And then the, so that's our debt limit. And then some projects we have are what they call outside the debt limit. A lot of those are water and sewer projects. Um, those are usually funded by our enterprise funds and by the water and sewer rates. Those don't count towards that limit. Um, so that was, that's a good question. That was one of the things when we did the four building project analysis and we looked forward, we wanted to see how close we were gonna bump up against that debt limit. Um, and I don't believe we ever got over a hundred million with the, that, that's part of what's driving the budgets for these projects and, and why we're trying to um, have a complete package, a complete financial plan for all the projects. Uh, yeah, given um, the four projects, we have, uh, we have some uh, challenges ahead. Mm -hmm. Anna. So state aid is chapter 90, right? Mm -hmm. yep. What about things like ARPA funds or other federal grants that are coming through for COVID relief, is that included under capital or is that, does that go somewhere, Sonia? No, it goes somewhere else. Okay, thank you. So that's not included. The other thing that's not included are enterprise funds. So they, right. that's in within the enterprise fund when we talk about those um, in the budget document or with finance committee, uh, that capital is separate from this. Okay, so even though there are four capital projects, it's not included in the capital budget. The four capital projects are- Sorry, no, sorry. I meant the, the funding that comes through. That's for like smaller capital improvements. That's not included in this. The- um, Like ARPA funds for, for a smaller thing, for yeah, road so repair ARPA, and stuff. Yeah, so ARPA funds are just not in this because this is mo mainly focused. We don't usually include those types of grants here, but I, I think we could provide a separate um, report or something on that type of capital. Uh, that's okay. Grant, grants would have been a better word instead of going specific in what I was talking about. Right. So I, that's, that's what okay. I was curious about. Thank you. All right. I will keep going. I'll try to go quickly so we can spend a little bit of time on the um, timeline. So the next few pages, again, this was last year, what's already been approved, but these are all the individual projects and it has the out years. Um, the only thing I'll point out here is you'll see the department on the left. You'll see the location. Um, the description of the project 
And then this column here is the funding source. So if it says cash capital, that means we would buy it outright. Um, if it says other, that would be an example of something that's funded from um, uh, a grant or some other funding source. If it says borrowing, it's a borrowing. So those um, are the- sorry, I'll just, ahead, yeah, that was um, just prior, it's repurposed capital. So if uh, capital accounts aren't spent then we can repurpose those capital. So that's repurposed capital. Um, grants normally, normally we we pay we um, charge direct the grants directly for capital. I mean, all expenses come directly out of grant funds, separate accounts. This is just the general fund. And this is where I'll just point this one out because there was a question on it. So um, the chapter ninety one we specifically call state aid because it's so. It's, it recurs every year. Um, so here okay. you'll see the road repair resurfacing state aid. This is the estimate we use every year because it's, it's generally around that amount. And then you'll see another road repair, um, uh, another road repair here. This was a little bit unique this year. We, um, similar to what Sonia just said, we repurposed old capital. Um, we had a capital reserve in FY21 that wasn't used. So we repurposed that to support the FY22 capital plan. Um, and then the regular cash capital road repair, which we usually have every year. Um, and you can see the amounts. And then there is a separate one for sidewalks as well. So Sean, that other, that other is um, the capital reserve we did in fiscal year 21, mm -hmm. when we reduced the capital plan and we decided to just fund uh, roads and then put it in a reserve in case something came up. And then we, we allocated it out in the next year. So that's what that 700,000 is. So the next section, we do put a little description of um, each project. So you'll see that after it goes roughly in order of the projects up above. Um, so you'll see a description there. And we did try last year to start highlighting projects that um, improve the uh, sustainability efforts of the town. Um, so if you see something highlighted in green or that has a little green leaf, it, um, it's something that the department had reported will improve um, improve sustainability for that department or for, for, for the town overall. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Sorry, there's a lot of these. All right. Um, so one thing we started doing last year too is this sort of pending list. So we knew there were a number of projects that were on the capital plan before that were nice projects, um, important projects, but were not the highest priority or, or we didn't just didn't have funding for them. And so we wanted to not lose them um, or lose sight of them, but we did want, we did take them off the plan and then we, we list them here. So there's sort of two categories. There's projects that if we get a grant, these are high on the list for things we would do. Um, you know, the grant, depending on what the grant is there. Um, and then the second section are projects that again are also important, but we're just, they're not developed enough to the point where it should be on the capital plan yet. We're not ready to, um, to move forward with that project. So this, these lists will be updated again for this coming year, but that's, that was the reason for this. That these are things that were taken off the five-year plan. Um, and if we get funding, they might go back on, um, but for now they're off. This section here um, is around asset maintenance. So this is just a summary of different buildings in town, um, how much we spend on, sorry, go back this way how much we spend on utilities, maintenance of those buildings, their square footage, um, roughly their hours of operation, which probably won't be super accurate this year with COVID, but um, that's what this page is. This page is, uh, we started giving JCPC a report of any capital projects that are three years or older and that were not fully spent so that JCPC could, when they meet with the departments, they could inquire um, a little more about why those projects weren't fully spent yet. So you'll see um, the projects, usually the project number, that first number uh, relates to the fiscal year in which it was approved. Um, the, the department, the project description, the amount that's still available. And then we try to give you a status update if we can get one um, in time. So again, this is old. So this, a lot of this has been uh, spent or, or, um, uh, or updated since that point. And then I see a couple of hands. I'm just going to finish real quick so we can go to the timeline up, but we'll go to the questions first. Um, this, these are just some over like baseline information about capital planning, um, what a project needs to be to be eligible, how we prioritize, 
um, the different, some of the stuff I talked about, the different financing options, things like that. And then the last section, which I'm not going to go into super detail, is inventory. So you'll see a building inventory and a vehicle inventory. Um, and I will stop there. So I see two hands, Farah and Alex. And the way I, okay, I think now I can see the screen. Alex's hand looked like it went up first. Um, nope, Farah, you're, you're on. Um, I was just curious about the child, child care facility on one of the pages. Mm -hmm. what, what is that or where is that? So I believe I get them confused sometimes. There's two, we have two facilities, two town-owned buildings um, that have child care. Oh. Um, so I believe this is the one over by Wildwood. There's one by Wildwood, right? Yeah, because it's not yep. the North Hammer School. So I believe that's the one over by so, Wildwood. Right, it's a separate little building when you enter Wildwood. So as, okay. as you go down the driveway, that building to the right. Okay, um, so it's town, a daycare, okay. Thanks. Alex. It's a Head Start program, Tara. Um, are we going to add the North Amherst Library to the list of assets? I don't think that building ever got added. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And, and, and that's probably a good example, Alex, of something that didn't enter in this capital program because a donor financed a big expansion of it. So, you know, it's, it's a facility we own that's going to be improved. Um, but up until now, we've been fixing it too. So, yeah. You know, it's just not, it's just not on the list of assets. It's not even, I know, it's not even, yeah, yeah, no, it's not even on the list. So, Perfect. Perfect. Um, Question, Sean, how, uh, where are we now with that 100 million? Uh, in other words, that is the, the gross amount that we were looking at for the 100 million. How much of that uh, has already been or is um, encumbered in some way or another, or, that, or is that a part of the debt scheme? For the four building projects? Yes. Uh, I so mean, the what only... you said our capacity is 100 million, 100 million dollars. Yeah. What do we now currently have outstanding? So um, the only project that is sort of encumbered at this point is the Jones Library. Um, so we have, uh, we're, we've, we've moved forward with the owner's project manager. We're working on extending a contract with the designer. Um, the town council approved the funding or the borrowing authorization for it. Um, so really the only project that, um, I'll add one additional piece to that. Um, that's the, the big piece that's sort of moving forward. We do have smaller pieces of funding approved for the schools for a feasibility study and for the DPW and the fire station for um, engineering and design work. So we've got um, maybe a three or $4 million between those other three projects um, authorized. And, and there's very little other outstanding debt. Okay. Yeah, otherwise the debt is pretty low in the town. All right, and in terms of the Jones Library, what is that? What is that? number so we haven't borrowed for it yet the amount authorized was yes. i believe the the full amount of the project I'm, i'd have to pull up the um the order but the the expectation is that we would borrow just the town share um at the end that's the amount we'd end up having to pay back which would be about 15 million all right if we say 15 million then some small amounts we're, we're talking somewhere under 80 million dollars in terms of total capacity of remaining Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Kathy, can I quickly go to the timeline? Because I want to make sure we no. get through that. And no, no, um, I, th I think it'd be great. And Sean, I don't remember what you sent everyone, but you, if you didn't send, you can see, we can make sure you get last year's JCPC report, which what, what fed into the, the report and the capital plans are up with all these inventory, all this information is on the web. So we can make sure you at least know where to find it. All right. So timeline, um, it's, which to be structured very in a similar fashion as last year. Here we are tonight doing this piece. Next week, we would present the, the preliminary version of the five-year capital improvement program, um, have time for general questions. And then we do have one resident capital request who is here tonight um, that we would talk about as well. Um, and then we have, uh, we 
have tentatively put departments in for the next few meetings. So the way that would work is those departments would come, they would give very brief presentations on their projects um, and then turn it over to the committee for questions. And so, and then once all the presentations are done, there would be a couple of meetings for JCPC to discuss a recommendation. If there's any work to be done to, to get, our, get the, the plan balanced or, um, or make adjustments to the plan, that would happen during these final two meetings. Um, and we have, a, we have a third, if necessary, if there's any reason for delay. Um, we do, I did wanna talk about a couple dates um, to see if we could shift the meeting time, if that would be okay with people. Um, there's three meeting dates where JCPC conflicts with, I think it's CRC. Um, and so those dates are February 24th, March 3rd, and March 17th. And I guess I'm looking, is this schedule okay? And are, if people are people okay with on those three dates starting at 6.30 instead of five? Um, I don't know what the most efficient way would be is if, what, a show of hands if you are okay with it. <laughs> so I, I can't see everybody. Wait a minute, I have to make my screen be bigger. I'm, I'm fine with it. So if people want to just raise their hand of shifting fine or shout it out uh shifting's going to I, i'd have to look at my calendar i know, I know that uh, thursdays are really problematic and i had uh, already uh calendared in the dates that and times that were previously put out there so i'd have to go back and look at my calendar because uh, for whatever reason thursdays are just an incredibly popular time to have meetings so sean do you want to send out an email then and just find out. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't affect next um, next week. Yes. So um, as long as we can get a sense by next week, we can we can um, finalize it at that point. Yeah, Mandy. I think, yeah. So so I'm the one with the conflict because I'm I chair the community resources committee, um, and I also happen to be on this one. Um, I would appreciate. I, I I'm going to be talking to my vice chair of CRC to see how much of each CRC meeting I can miss, but any move slightly later of JCPC those three nights would greatly help me. CRC starts at 4.30. Um, I, I, I know I can get out of a half an hour of CRC most every time given the coming agendas, which so even a six o'clock or a 5.30 start instead of five would allow me to miss less of each meeting. And so I, you know, and I, I just want to say I appreciate the consideration for it since it's it's my conflict there. Jennifer. So um, I, I just wanted to ask, so like next week, um, Sean, you're gonna present the town manager's preliminary plan. And so like, that's gonna be posted ahead of time, right? So yeah, that we can we look will, at it. We will try to get it to you a couple of days ahead of time. Um, yeah, we, I, I just- we'll do our best. I think the- we know it's a lot of material to go through, so we'll do our best to get it up as early as we can. That would be great. I just wanted to ask if that all possible for you to put it up like 48 hours in advance, because I'm someone who like needs to like sit alone and read something in order right. to be able to like take it in. Okay. The one thing I'll say is you'll, um, the good thing is we kind of go through it in chunks. So um, if there isn't something you get to the first night, we're going to, you know, each night we're going to be diving into a different chunk of, um, of the plan. So, um, but I, I do hear that. Paul. Cool. Yeah, so just so I think that's a really good point that the next meeting is just an overview. It's not a substantive discussion necessarily. And then every meeting you'll say, okay, today we're talking about police and fire. The next week we're talking about DPW the next week. So you'll have plenty of time to dig into it. The other thing just want to clarify, and I'll ask this of Sonia. Um, uh, Irv was asking about debt capacity and the $100 million. That The school is outside that. The school does not apply to that. Is that accurate, Sonia? Yes. So when we look at debt capacity, we're only talking about non-school projects. So oh, I really, really, really appreciate that clarification. Believe me, I was in panic. I knew you were. <laughs> <laughs> so just, oh, I, I just like to clarify: the school is outside of it simply because the school is planned for a debt exclusion override, right? It, it also has special discipline. It's it's in this odd category yeah. that, um, because of the way because of the way the state funds it. You know, I think it so has that, more to do with it being an MSBA project. Um, was my recollection that there was some um, 
special section of the law for, for MSBA funded product, but we can get the exact um, uh, legal uh, section where that's referred to. You know, and I looked it up and it's, you know, the way the library, we had to take on the full project, even though we're getting paid it back, they knew with school that we get paid differently. So they, we would bump up against debt because it's so expensive, but we can get that back to you. It was an, it was, it was an archaic explanation, but, <laughs> and it's a, just one other thing is Sean brings these pieces to us and we get the big piece last time if we got any questions to him early, we, could, we had focused discussions with the departments on questions. And similarly, after the discussion, if there were remaining questions, John was really good at getting answers for us. So we, we had two ways of interacting that weren't just in, in the moment of meeting that I thought worked really well. Sonia. I just want to clarify that um, debt exclusions have nothing to do with whether with debt capacity or debt limit that you don't go into that in the, to that equation. Thank you. You're welcome. Alex. I just want to quickly say that this is a really new JCPC committee. Um, I'm the longest serving member, which is terrifying in terms of <laughs> this being a really, and I asked a million questions for the first two years that I was on the committee and Mandy Jo asked a million questions. Um, if you're a geek like me, if every JCPC report that's issued each year is a really good summary. And if you go back to FY 2020, we actually used to include a history of JCPC and like how, so if you wanna geek out, go read some reports that will help round out a lot of things. But um, yeah, so questions are good. Can I just... I don't know if I said debt exclusions or overrides. I meant overrides have no play into the debt exclusion. Just to clarify that, I can't could remember what I said. <laughs> Pretty bad. So I'm, I think um, I'm looking for any other questions or comments. It looks like we're two minutes from six o'clock. So we, we do have one member of the public. Yeah. And we have a member of the public. So I just want to make sure there's no more committee questions. And if our member of the public, um, I, we will take a public comment if there is a comment. So I'll wait a second to see if a hand goes up. We don't see it. Um, so we're get, the town is getting much better at posting these videos quickly. You know, so um, both the, the material will go in a packet, but to the extent you're late to a meeting and want to see a discussion or go back and listen to it again, um, those are now up pretty quickly. Um, and I can't remember how we've been handling minutes, Sean. I think you, you know, to the extent we did minutes, we we kind of took the program summary as the minutes. We didn't we didn't do yeah. go board on minutes. Yeah, I'll I'll do them for tonight. I. I, I volunteered for tonight because it was a it was a short meeting, so I, I volunteered for that one. Okay, I think so we assign each week to a member of the committee. Yeah, so I th I think next time just prepare be prepared to be volunteers, um, and uh, that would be great. So I don't see any other questions. I can see everyone on the screen, and is everyone all right with me doing the simple way of adjourning, saying I think we are adjourned, and thank you all for coming. See you next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.